Hey, what's up guys? I'm gonna show you guys all the different ways of connecting the Eero Pro 6C. This is gonna be a full on demonstration because I have a modem here, an unmanaged switch here, a bunch of ethernet cables, and we have a router here. So we're gonna go over all the different ways of connecting it. You might've heard of wired or ethernet backhaul or wireless backhaul, so all of that stuff, so stick around. Now real quick, this is for the Eero Pro 6C. If you guys are interested for the speed test, range test, and what the Eero app looks like, I've done that in a separate video, so I will put a link to that in the description box below. And I'll also put the product links down below as well, so if you guys are interested in something, you could check out the links below. And please take a second to smash that subscribe button if you guys enjoy these types of videos. It's completely free to do. I really appreciate it. And share these videos if you guys find them helpful. Thank you guys. Okay, let's get started. So. What is a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is when you have two units, two or more units, I should say, that act together to create a single network. So, in this case, both of these are expanding your Wi-Fi coverage. I mean, that's really what a mesh Wi-Fi is designed for. So, if you live in a larger home or somewhere else and you're not really getting too much Wi-Fi coverage uh, throughout one place or in your backyard you're not getting much or depending on where you live, a mesh Wi-Fi is kind of designed to fight against that in a, in a sense because when you get two or more units, now you're boosting your Wi-Fi coverage and when you're walking throughout your home, let's just say you have your Wi-Fi device, it will automatically connect you here if you're closer to this guy and if you walked to, let's just say a few rooms away, it will automatically switch you to this one to ensure you have the best possible Wi-Fi coverage. Okay, now, before I show you guys how to connect this, Let's start with the basic connection. Well, I mean, we're gonna jump straight into this very quickly, but essentially there are two, two ways I can think of that are currently that people are using, um, aside, unless you're going from another mesh Wi-Fi, but even in that case, it's really, it's really similar. So if you have a system where you have your modem, and that's connected to your router. It's very simple. You unplug your router, you put your router away, you don't need that anymore. You plug in the Eero and you open up the Eero app, follow the instructions, super simple, it tells you what to do. You pick your Wi-Fi name and your password and here's a hint, if you pick the same Wi-Fi name and password as your router that you're replacing, your devices should automatically connect to this and this is super important. The Wi-Fi name and the password are both case sensitive. So very important, the Wi-Fi name, this SSID itself is also case sensitive. Okay, so once you have that, technically your network is up and running and we'll talk about adding this in, in a minute or two, but this is all you pretty much need because the Eero itself is a router. And this is also a router, however in the same network, the secondary one acts as an extender or a node or an access point or a satellite, whatever you wanna call it, it's no longer acting as a router because you only want one router in your network to control everything. Okay, now the other way is if you have a modem router built in. So let's just say your current setup is a modem router combo. This is actually just a modem, but if you have a modem router combo, you have, might have some extra ports in the back and stuff. In that case, what you wanna do is you wanna access that, which you typically, there's instructions on the bottom, or you could call your ISP or Google it. But essentially, you go to its settings and then you disable the router portion by either if it says disable or if it says put it in bridge mode. That's what you do, which kind of nullifies the router that's built in. And then just like that, you plug in the ethernet cable. One of the ports is 2.5 gigabits, the other port is gigabits. So what do you do? Well, if you have internet speeds of up to gigabit, which is the case for me as of now, it doesn't matter which port I connect it to. I could connect it to the 2.5 or the gigabit because my internet speeds are not faster than gigabit, so it doesn't really matter which one I use. If you have internet speeds faster than gigabit, assuming your modem also handles it, which it would, you cannot use a Cat5e cable because Cat5e is limited to gigabit and you probably already knew that if you're running 
a faster than gigabit. So I now have a CAT7 cable and category seven does support up to 10 gigabits per second. So I would basically plug that in there, plug this into the 2.5 gigabit port, and now this Eero can support internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. With the Eero, you have one other port left. So what do you do, right? So if you're like me and you have multiple devices throughout your home that require e ethernet, what you can do is get an, get an unmanaged switch. So this is one example and Something important to note, an unmanaged switch's brand name does not matter. So unlike in the case of the Eero, where it has to be another Eero, and I should also mention, in the case of the Eero, it doesn't have to be the same exact model number Eero. So you could get an Eero Pro 6E and an Eero 6 Plus, and they will work with each other. However, I personally think it's always best to get the same model number as well. But Eros do work with each other, just as a heads up. So if you have some Eros lying around, you can get these or the other ones and they will play with each other. So that's good to go from there. Okay, so now you get an unmanaged switch and this is an eight port, there's different ones. There's a five port, a four port, there's a 16 port, 24, 48. There's a whole bunch of them. Eight port's pretty common and the unmanaged switch is fairly inexpensive compared to the managed switches. So What's the difference between a managed switch and an unmanaged switch? Well, the managed switch gives you more options. So you can create VLANs, which are virtual LANs, virtual local area networks. So you can assign IP addresses to stuff using a managed switch. You cannot do that with an unmanaged switch. However, in most cases, you don't want to do that. You want to do that through your router. So your router basically controls what goes out of this switch. So an unmanaged switch is the way to go. That's what I personally use. Okay, so in the case of the Eero, and here's the cool part, because we're going out of gigabit speeds, it doesn't actually matter if I use CAT7 anymore. I mean, I can, I don't need to, because now the port itself is limited to gigabit speed. So in this case, I use another ethernet cable, and I plug it into any, any port does not matter. I could plug it into port one, port six, port eight, doesn't matter. I personally like to use the edge one, so either port one or port eight, just so I know, okay, I know it's either this one or this one, or you can use a different color as well uh, for the ethernet cable, but that's how I know which one is connected to my router. But that's just a personal preference thing. So when you get an eight port switch, you have seven usable ports. So you're good to go there. Now, in this case, you can connect your computer to any one of these ports or your Xbox or your PlayStation or your Fire TV Cube, whatever you wanna connect, your Apple TV, it doesn't matter. You could connect them to any one of these ports and you are good to go. So plug these in, plug that in. You have you know a whole bunch of usable ports and you're now expanding your network. I should also mention that an unmanaged switch is plug and play. You literally set up nothing. You plug it into the power, you plug it into the ethernet cables and the router will handle everything for you automatically. So there's nothing you need to do. You can mix and match brand names of switches. So this is a Netgear switch, but it works perfectly fine with Eero or a TP-Link Deco or an SWiFi Pro or a Netgear or an Asus. It does not matter. You can also, mix and match switches with each other too. So if I had two switches, I could get a TP-Link switch and connect it to this Netgear switch and connect it to this and that does not matter. So wired backhaul is when you're using two of these and they are wired to each other or it's sometimes it's called Ethernet backhaul, it's the same exact thing. And basically the way that works is, let's say you don't have an unmanaged switch. You could just take the port of this guy and connect it to the port of this guy. And again, it doesn't matter which port you use because you're actually coming out of gigabit here, so it doesn't matter if you go into the 2.5 or the gigabit, you're still gonna be limited to the slower of the two, which is the gigabit port here. And we'll talk about the special case at the end of the video. Okay, so in this case, you have a wired backhaul setup. Inside the Eero app, you just say like, oh, I have one more Eero, it'll detect it, you're good to go. So you will have pretty much very good speeds throughout your home 
using this method. This is the method that I use, wired backhaul. Okay, you can also, it's still considered wired backhaul, is if you have it connected to the first one, the main router hooked up to the switch, and then from the switch you have another cable, and that one is hooked up to the Eero as well. So if you have another cable going from this guy to this guy, so as long as there's an ethernet cable making its way from one to the other through a switch or not, you can even have two switches. You can go from Eero to a switch and then one of these ports to another switch and then from that switch go to this Eero. That's also completely fine. The router will handle all of that automatically for you. So if you need more ports, feel free to do that. Okay, so this is the wired backhaul setup. You can also use this port. You can also use this port to connect, let's just say you have, I don't know, a, a Nintendo Switch you want to hook up on the other side. It, it doesn't matter, a laptop, doesn't matter. You can also use this port to hook up the other device, so you're good to go. So any of these ports will work, you should be good to go. Aside the modem port, do, do, do not use the other modem port, but um, a port from this, this, or this, they're all, they will all work fine. Connecting it to any other device, it should automatically detect it, and you should be good to go. So this is a full-on wired backhaul setup. Okay, now what is wireless backhaul? Well, wireless backhaul, let's clean this up just a tad, or a bit, because now it's, Okay, so let's put the switch aside just for a quick second. Wireless backhaul is when you have your main one hooked up to your modem via ethernet, which is again acting as the router. Wireless one is, this one is one or two rooms away, and it's, in my case it's usually around 35, 40 feet away or so, and this is just hooked up to power. Now when you hook this up to power, you add this in the Eero app, this one wirelessly talks to this one, so you, you're still creating a wireless network. However, because this guy is wirelessly talking to this one, typically the speeds are not quite as fast as this one. So if I'm walking throughout my home, if I'm close to this one, I'll have really good Wi-Fi bars. However, the speeds will not be quite as fast because not only does my phone wirelessly talk to this one, now this one wirelessly talks to this one before it goes through ethernet. So the more Wi-Fi you go through the slower typically typically things get so that's how wireless backhaul works however wireless backhaul is extremely convenient and one is one of the strongest selling points for mesh wi-fi is because it's like literally buy a mesh wi-fi plug this into your modem and plug this one or two rooms away and then if you get another one let's just say you got another one plug that one or two rooms away and it will create and expand your Wi-Fi coverage. Now, in the case you get three or more, if you can, not always possible, if you can, what the way you wanna place it is you wanna centrally place this. So if you had three and you were doing wireless backhaul, you don't want this guy talking to this guy, then talking to this guy. What you wanna do is if you can, not always possible, if this guy is your router, this is your other one, this is your other one. So you want this guy to talk directly to this, not hop from the other one to this guy. So you want both of these to hop directly to the main router. That's going to ensure you have the best possible Wi-Fi speeds for a wireless backhaul setup. Whereas if you were going, Basically, if this guy was jumping at this guy, which was then jumping at this guy, this guy would suffer even more. Now, a common question I get asked is, if I have a wireless backhaul setup, let's put this six plus away. If I have a wireless backhaul setup, can I use the ethernet ports on this Eero? And the answer is yes, you can. For sure you can. So, if you have a PlayStation or whatever, or laptop, doesn't matter, anything that requires ethernet, you can just plug it into this, plug it into the device, and you should be good to go. Now, another question I get asked is, okay, we have a wireless backhaul setup. 
if I connect this via Ethernet, is it going to be the same as Ethernet speeds? And the, the simple answer is no. Because even though your device, let, let's just assume this was a laptop and this was connected via Ethernet, this one, yes, it has an amazing connection to this access point. However, this guy still needs to wirelessly talk to this guy, which then goes through the internet. So you still have this Wi-Fi connection here. So it's not going to be as fast as if I connected, you know, this, this same exact, let's, again, assuming this was a laptop or something that required ethernet, if I connected it to this guy, this would be a much faster connection because now this is going through this and then through a wire it's going to the modem. So essentially you're limiting all Wi-Fi connections which is ensuring you have really good speeds. Now Wi-Fi 6C on the new 6 gigahertz band is crazy fast. In fact, on the local speed test I can actually even get faster than gigabit. So something worth note there, but typically speaking Ethernet is always a fast stable connection typically not always I should say typically okay so those are the ways another question I get asked is can I mix wired and wireless backhaul the answer is yes you can do I another question is do I need to set up so so let's just say I originally set up the Eero and this was a wired backhaul connection like this and then later on I, I moved somewhere or for whatever reason I, I decided to make this a wireless backhaul. Do I need to go inside the Eero app and specifically say hey now this is wireless backhaul? No you don't. The Eero app will automatically determine that and do that for you. Super easy. Once it's set up you're good to go. So another question I get asked is for a wireless backhaul setup can I hook up an unmanaged switch to this? And the answer is yes you can do that as well. So you can hook up an unmanaged switch to this and use these ports to basically connect your other devices. So pretty much any way you connect this, all of, not any way, but all of the ports between the router, the access point, the switch, you can use any of the ports, whether it's a wireless backhaul or a wired backhaul, you're free to use the ports. However, typically for wired backhaul connections, the ports are faster. And the number one question I get asked that I've seen most commonly is can I go from modem to switch first and then from the switch go to both both of these and the answer is no you cannot hook up an unmanaged switch to this and then from this go to these it's not going to work the the Everything that comes has to come after the router. So you can connect it in just about any order you want. So as long as the modem is hooked up to the router directly, from there on out, you can go from this to this and then hook this guy up to the switch. You can go from this to the switch and then from this to this. You can go from this to a switch to another switch to this. So you're free as long as this is super important. The router needs to be hooked up to the modem directly via ethernet. So that was pretty much the main question I get asked. Finally, let's talk about the special case condition because one question I do get asked is, can I create a 2.5 gigabit LAN if my internet speeds are gigabit speeds or lower? And the simple answer is yes, but let's talk about the specifics of that. So the way you would do that is in that case, which is the case for me as well, because my internet speeds are slightly under gigabit, I can go from modem to the gigabit port on the Pro 6C and leave the 2.5 gigabit alone. Now, for the, for the sake of this question, let's just assume this unmanaged switch can handle 2.5 gigabit speeds or higher. So I actually have a 10 gigabit unmanaged switch that I use which would fall in that category, but let's just assume for the sake of this video, this thing can handle 2.5 gigabits or higher. So in that case, what I would do is this modem is going to the gigabit port of this guy, and then from the 2.5 of this guy, I'm going to this supposed 2.5 gigabit switch. And then from this supposed 2.5 gigabit switch, I'm going to the 2.5 gigabit port on this Pro 6C. 
Now what I've done here is I've created a 2.5 gigabits per second LAN connection or a 2.5 gigabits per second wired backhaul connection. Now, not to be confused that this is in no way, shape or form going to increase the speeds of my internet. So my internet speeds are controlled by my modem, which are controlled by my internet service provider. So which are going to be under gigabit because you're connected to the gigabit port speeds of this guy. So what's the advantage of having a 2.5 gigabits per second LAN if you're still limited to your internet speeds that are gigabit speeds or under? Well, one advantage is let's just say you have a network attached storage, basically a network hard drive that can support faster speeds than that, which some Synology devices can. And let's just assume your desktop can also go faster than gigabit, so let's just say it has a 2.5 gigabit connection. Well now, you can actually transfer files between each other quicker because they're gonna go through a 2.5 gigabits per second connection. And the same way you would connect it, the same exact thing. So basically, this would be connected to your computer and this would be connected to your network attached storage. So within the same network, the connection can be faster, but when you're accessing the internet, again, no help whatsoever. And there are other cases like this too. So if you were doing like a LAN gaming and you know you had two computers and they supported those speeds, you can between each other, if you were doing the game on the LAN, not on the internet, that would also increase the speed. So this is more of a rare or an edge case condition. But as always, hopefully this helps. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave it in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.